So in this video, I'm gonna walk through a polynomial evaluation using the fast Fourier transform and show you how like the divide and conquer um, kind of works. So consider we have this polynomial right here, um, a of x. It's a degree free polynomial. So to have a value representation of it, we need n to be greater than or equal to four, such that n is gonna be the next power of two. So in this case, we can just choose n as Four. So we need the four roots of unity. So the first root of unity is actually um, just going to be e to the 2 pi i over 4, or cosine of, let's see, um, pi i over pi over 2, and plus i of sine of pi over 2 which is just equals to, um, so this is gonna be zero, and it's gonna be one, right? So zero and one, so we're gonna get i, right? And we see that if we compute all, um, all four roots, we're gonna get zero, oh, it's not zero. So it's gonna be one, i, negative one, and negative i. Right. Or if you just draw your unit circle, you can see that if we have four roots of unity, and this one has uh, this has to be the first one, you need three other points that are the same degrees apart. So you have this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So we see that we now have this um, these four roots of unity. But I'm going to show you like kind of the concept of the divide and conquer from uh, from polynomials. So if I were given a of x i, I can take the even powers, let's call this a of e squared plus x i squared, and the odd degrees of this polynomial of a, and basically take the square root of them, right? And I can do the same thing for the negative one. I'm going to get a of negative x squared minus x, uh, x of i, a of o of negative x i squared. So either way, since, um, so that we're gonna do this, we're gonna use plus minus pairs to pair them together. So the plus minus pairs that we have here are gonna be one and negative one, and i and negative i. The reason we use plus minus pairs is because when I square my terms, what I'm gonna get is that the positive square and the negative square are gonna be same value, right? So in this case, if I compute, so I'm gonna call this, um, okay. So in this case, I'm gonna compute a of i, one, it's gonna be equal to a e of one plus one of one the negative one, right? So a even of negative one squared is gonna be one, minus one times the odd degree polynomial of negative one squared, which is also gonna be one here. And so that that's my first positive minus pairs. And now I wanna take a of i. Here, when I squared i, I'm gonna get negative one passed in, right? plus i times, again, i squared is gonna give me negative one. So same thing for the negative i case. I have negative i squared is gonna be negative one times x, in this case is negative i, it's a of o, and then same thing, right? So all I need to compute are a e of one, a e of negative one, Actually, a o of one, a e of negative one, and the odd term of negative one as well. So for now, next step is to split this polynomial into even and odd, right? So I'm just gonna do this like kind of the long way um, to help you guys um, kind of walk through the steps, right? So let's take this polynomial. If I have the odd, so here are gonna be the even degreed terms. 
and then the odd degree terms of this case. Now what I can do is I can take an x, right? I can take an x out from this odd degree polynomial, and I'm going to get 3x squared plus x of 2 plus x squared. Now remember, we're passing into these a of e, um, so I'm going to call this b and c instead, right? I'm going to pass in into this, these polynomials b and c, right? And what I'm passing in, I'm passing in a power of the x, which means that what I could do is I can essentially turn these into 4 plus 3 of y plus x of 2 plus y, right? Where y is going to be equal to x squared. So I've just taken a polynomial of degree 3 and turned it into two subproblems, right? Here are two subproblems with polynomial um, of the degree only 1, right? So I just half, I half more or less, half the degree that I have. So, so now let's compute these values, right, using these terms. So I'm going to have a e of x is going to be equal to, I'm going to call it b of x. So this is going to be 4 plus 3 of x, right? In this case, I just take, I took the x squared out, made it like um, its own like entity, because I'm passing an x squared in. So I pass an x squared here, I'm going to get an x squared term over here. Right. So same thing for the odd, I'm going to take the odd term, um, this is going to be c. And here I'm going to get 2 plus x. Right, so now let's compute these four points. Um, if I have, so b of 1 is going to be equal to 4 plus 3 of 1, or that's just going to be 7. b of negative 1, um, this is going to be 4 plus 3 of negative 1, which equals positive 1, 4 minus 3 is positive 1. So I have c of 1, um, that's 2 plus 1 equals to 3, and c of negative 1, which is 2 minus 1, which equals to 1. So I have these four terms from my, um, from my sub problems. So the actual algorithm in this case will actually take 4 plus 3x and 2 plus x, and split them one more time into basically, um, what you're going to get is basically just 4 and 3, right? And then the base case of the algorithm is actually going to return the polynomial that you pass in in that case, because they know that you have zero degree. Once you reach like, once you reach the roots of unity that you pass in is going to be 1, you know that the polynomial that you pass in will only have a degree of 0. But in this case, um, since the math is simple enough, we can always just stop at the 1 and negative 1 step. So anyway, so the omega in this case that we pass in is going to be um, 1 and negative 1, right? So the two, the t here are the two roots of unity. I went from four roots of unity to only the two roots of unity of 1 and negative 1. And so after I take these roots of unity into the four different, the two polynomials that I have, I now get the values from 7, negative 1, 3, and 1, right? So I get, I have four values from passing in the two roots of unity into the two sub-polynomials. So now I want to recover my a, a of x. So a of 1 is going to be equal to, that's b of 1, right, 7 plus c of 1. I'm going to get 10. A of, ooh, sorry. Ooh. Yeah, so that's going to be 10. Um, A of negative 1, again, we're going to use 7, right? It's B of 1 plus, ooh, and here we're going to do minus 3, and we're going to get 4, right? Now let's move on to A of i. Here, a of i, we're going to have b of x, b of negative 1, which is negative 1, plus i of negative, um, of c of negative 1. So I'm going to get is negative 1 minus i. And a of negative i will give you, let's see, 
you have negative 1 minus i of negative 1. Right? See, the only thing I change between the when I do positive minus pairs at this level is the signs, right? I only change the signs, and that means I'm like reusing the problems like um, that I'm reusing. So we have overlapping problems that we can reuse for both these two values. So here is going to be negative 1 plus i. So this is how the divide and conquer step works. Uh, I get a polynomial. I'm going to compute the roots of unity for this polynomial, right? So these are the values that I want to compute for it. And then I split up the polynomial into the even and odd degrees. I now need to compute these four terms using these four values, right? And since they're positive minus pairs, and since once I square them, the only, the only difference is going to be the plus and the minus. And once I figure out b and x, or the odd, the even and odd terms. Um, remember that if I have x squared values here, right, you replace x squared with like a y, because we're going to pass, we, we're passing in x squared. So these subproblems have the degree of like less than half the size. So what I've essentially done is I've taken my problem initially, I've split them into two subpolynomials, b and c, and each of these, since we're squaring our input, it, the subproblem is going to be half the degree, right? So n is the degree I have. In this case, it's 4. I went from 4 points to something that's only need 2 points. And so, and this arithmetic, we can just assume it's going to be linear time. Um, and this, by the master theorem, is going to give us o, ooh, an n log n solution. Right. So this is the evaluation part of f of t. Um, there's also the selection. So go selection. I'm going to select points. Now I'm going to evaluate points. Right. So this is the evaluation step. And then I'm going to multiply the points together. And then finally, I'm going to take these, these. So I'm going to take these points, the final step, and then recover my polynomial back, um, which I'm not going to show here. But, and the big idea is that, ooh, I'm, out, I'm out of battery. The big idea is that this is going to take linear time. This is going to take linear time. I, so this evaluation step example I just showed is going to take n log n. And um, interpolation is basically the reverse evaluation. And that's also going to take n log n using divide and conquer. Um, you should go read the textbook. And so if we do polynomial multiplication using FFT, the final runtime, right? So this is the main, this is, a, this is something you should definitely remember for the exam, is that if I have polynomial multiplication using FFT, um, your runtime, right? So I'm multiplying degree of like A of X has let's say degree of n, and b of x has degree of m. So our final polynomial is going to have degree of m plus m, right? And so in order for this to work, we need m plus m points. And therefore, in the actual, in the actual um, FFT, you, the actual algorithm is going to take O of m plus m log of m plus m. So whichever one is bigger, because um, someone choose adding it, it's just going to be larger of the two, right? So it's going to be the max of n and m log the max of n or m. Right, so this is the main idea. So in this example, I only showed you like using evaluation for one poly polynomial. But if you were to actually need to multiply a of ax and bx to obtain c of x, remember to get the, uh, to get your like number of roots of infinity to be greater than m plus m plus 1, right? And it needs to be the smallest, um, it needs to be the smallest power of 2 that's greater than, that's greater than or equal to m plus m plus 1. So we can then define a polynomial using those points, and the power of 2 is to use the divide and conquer so that we can do divide and conquer with plus minus pairs using the roots of un unity at every step. All right, so this concludes the FFT walkthrough.